When a woman makes a man wait before sleeping with him, she is acting out of a biological instinct. But when some charming guy at the club talks to her and makes her feel all of these fluttery emotions so that she'll sleep with him that night, she is also acting out of a biological instinct. Why? Why does her biology contradict itself? Is she supposed to be monogamous or promiscuous? In order to understand this, we need to first realize that women have two reproductive instincts, a primary instinct and a secondary instinct. If the primary instinct is failing, then she has the secondary instinct to fall back on. What is her primary instinct? From an evolutionary perspective, a woman needs to be able to attract a man with two fundamental qualities. Number one, good genes, so that her children will be healthy. And number two, commitment. Because if she has children with a man who does not commit to her, then who's going to protect her? Who's going to provide for her children? So this is the ultimate goal, is to find the perfect man in terms of genetics and behavior. However, achieving this goal is not always possible because not a lot of men have good genes and not a lot of men can provide. This is why when a woman meets a man who she perceives to have good genetics, she's not going to want to sleep with him right away because she needs to find out what kind of man he is. Is he loyal? Is he dedicated? Her biology is telling her to wait to make sure that he's going to stick around and provide for the children. Once he's proven to be a good husband, a good father, only then a sexual relationship can begin. This is the good old advice that was given to women that they need to secure commitment first before sleeping with a man. So you see, female chastity is not some social or cultural construct. It's deeply biological because that's the most practical way to help a woman achieve her goal which is to have healthy children and they're likely to survive. Now, let's say a woman is desperate, maybe because she's not as pretty, she's not attractive, she's not smart, or she's getting a little bit older, and she doesn't think that she can attract a high-quality man, a man with both genetics and behavior. This is where her secondary instinct comes in. Now, she has three options. Number one, forget about the good genes. Focus on finding a man who's going to be a good provider. Since he's not genetically impressive, it's going to be easier to get into a relationship with him because he probably hasn't received a lot of female attention. But at least she can sleep at night knowing that her children will be provided for and they'll have a father growing up. Number two, forget about the provider. Focus on the genes. Find a man who is genetically superior. Tall, muscular, handsome. Now this guy has a lot of options, so it's going to be more difficult to secure a commitment from him. But there's a good chance that he'll sleep with her. So she sleeps with him and hopes that after she gets pregnant, the guy's going to stick around and commit. It's just gambling. It's a shot in the dark. And the third option, she sleeps with a man with good genes and then convinces the guy who's going to be a good provider to raise her children. Now, you might be thinking, what kind of a man would agree to this arrangement? Why would you spend resources to raise someone else's kid? That's ridiculous. Well, it's not a problem if he doesn't know about it. You see, because the woman cannot attract a high quality man, she is settling down with a lower quality man, a provider. Now, she might be grateful for his resources, but secretly she wishes that her children would have the genetics of a high quality man. So at night, she sneaks around and sleeps with the high quality men, and in nine months, she has his child. And the provider guy mistakenly thinks that the child is his. Now, what if I told you that evolution has positively selected for women to have the ability to execute this strategy without her partner's detection? It's called concealed ovulation. If you don't know what I'm talking about, keep watching because I'm about to blow your mind. The first thing you need to know is that concealed ovulation is extremely rare. There are thousands of mammal species on the planet, but only 32 of them conceal their ovulation. We are the only group of living primates where the woman conceal their ovulation. Think of female baboons. When they get that massive red swelling on their butt, that is a sign that they're ovulating. So the male baboons know exactly when to mate. Dogs and cats also display extreme behavioral changes when they are ovulating. That's normal. That's how it is for most species on the planet. But when it comes to human, there's no way of telling for sure when she's ovulating. Just by looking at her, you don't know what stage of cycle she is in. So because of concealed ovulation, there's no way of knowing when she's able to get pregnant. Maybe if she has massive red swelling like the female baboons, then it will be obvious that she's ovulating for 48 hours and then her partner can just watch her that entire time to make sure that any children she has are his. But a woman's biology makes that impossible. That is the purpose of concealed ovulation. What's even crazier is that this is not a bug. It's a feature. Infidelity is built into our biology. Now, I know it's a tough reality, but if you consider it from the perspective of a gene that wants to survive, infidelity makes a lot of sense. This infidelity arrangement is beneficial for the woman who's doing the cheating and the man she's cheating with because the woman gets the best of both worlds. 
she gets to have children with superior genetics, and they're going to be provided for. And the man gets to pass on his genes with zero commitment. From a reproductive point of view, to be able to pass on your genes and have some other dude raise your kids, that's like discovering the biological cheat code. Now, unfortunately, this arrangement really sucked for the provider guy because he spends his time, energy, and resources to raise children that are not even his. So he's losing out on both resources and the opportunity to reproduce. So as you can see, biologically speaking, a woman has all the available programs that can be used when necessary to carry out these strategies. Again, they might not be her first choice, but if she wants her genes to survive, she'll do whatever it takes. All right, that concludes the video. I don't know about you, but I find this topic very interesting. I hope you do too. Let me know what you think in the comment. Until next time, stay curious.